and both crews really attacking actually, aren't they? Really going for it. Both very big boys here. Look at the rating of the Dane just as he goes off. Sverre Nielsen, I mean, he's exploded off the start, isn't he? And Nab, the Dutchman on the right of your screen with the distinctive uh, red, white and blue blades. A little more calm, a little more considered, but Nielsen has gone for the early lead, Adrian. He really has. He's rowing a little bit shorter in the first few strokes, but really is aggressive and accurate at the front end. He seems to be moving out, showing his power. It's 551. And yesterday when he raced, he was down at the first two markers, so maybe he just hadn't had enough of that and really wanted to try and dominate this piece straight away. Yeah, well, Nav uh, raced Plocek of the Czech Republic, effectively the second Czech single sculler, and uh, he led him all the way down the course. And uh, Sverre Nielsen raced Dave Bell, the people's champion from Molsey. In the end, he beat him easily, but Dave Bell gave him a real go. He blasted out, and as you said, he was uh, leading him through the first two markers, the Barry and Forley. But, uh, I really can't see Nab coming back from this, and it's really difficult to understand. I mean, Nielsen has just gone for explosion, hasn't he? It doesn't. It almost makes look makes Nab look pedestrian in the stroke rate. And Nielsen's really on top of it, taking many more strokes and being really aggressive. Whereas Nab, in contrast, looks like he's going for a Sunday row. What's going through Nab's mind at the moment? Probably a multitude of things. He's wondering. He knows probably now already that it's over, but he knows that he needs to complete the race. He hasn't looked round at all, has he? he hasn't. I mean, you know. And he's sculling nicely, it just doesn't look racy enough, does it? It looks like maybe it's a rower who's doing a bit a of A little sculling. bit too aggressive on the front end to me, Adrian. Um, just a little bit, you know, he's not taking the whole boat with him when he puts his blade in. I think uh, if you look at his leg drive compared to Kim Brennan, the Australian Olympic champion, we were talking about her. I mean, she's a little bit slow with her legs. She gets more of a core onto the boat at the front end. I think he beats the boat in at the front end and uh, I'm not saying that's why he is where he is because he's, he's such a, a, a great athlete but uh, Nielsen is out of sight and also if you look at Nielsen look how wide his hands are at the front when he puts the blades in the water and the Dutch scholar's hands are quite close together so it's a much shorter stroke so Sverre Nielsen part of the Danish men's heavyweight program said it before at this regatta but uh, Danish rowing is not blessed with uh, thousands of athletes uh, I think there are something the order of 250 Danish athletes registered to race in Denmark yeah. in rowing and uh, they've really got to husband their resources yeah, they're very efficient they're very successful sport considering the lack of numbers I mean in fact they have a head race every year where everybody who's registered to race competes in the same head race yeah and uh, of course, so strong in lightweight men's rowing. They got medals in the lightweight men's double skull in the London Olympics. And uh, those two men, Mads Rasmussen and his partner, broke the hearts of uh, Purchase and Hunter. Well, just on the last sort of uh, 100 metres of that race to snatch gold away from them. And uh, of course, the Danish lightweight force, superb crew. But uh, Sverre Nielsen, I mean, he hasn't let up. He's not let off, and he just blasted out. I mean, what a fantastic endurance, and we know that from what you told us about his odometer time, Adrian. Yeah, he's got great physiology, and you can see how compact he is. Ooh, there, the blades a little bit. What happened there? He just, I think he clipped the water and had trouble getting the blades in the water. Just a little reminder that nothing's inevitable in this sport of rowing, and uh, so it's really going to make him hopefully just loosen a little bit, get a little bit more feel of the boat back so he knows what his blades are doing and just allow the boat to move under him in these uh, swelly, rocky conditions, windy conditions that he's battling through now. Yeah, and you can see by his feet there, there's a display again like we saw in the boys' quad, and it's giving him his speed and the, the, the cadence, the number of strokes per minute that he's taking. So Sverre Nielsen, I think he is tiring. You can see a little mistake from his uh, left-hand blade there. And Nab, well, he's stuck to his task all the way down. Uh, I can't see them in view yet. They still have got a bit of racing. I, I can't imagine Sverre Nielsen is going to blow up. And in rowing parlance, that means probably his muscles will be full of lactic acid and he'll hardly be able to move. But Nab has just hung in there. He's a strong, powerful man. Ruben Nab, he's out of shot at the moment. He's not out of this contest if uh, Sverre Nielsen tightens up. So they've done three quarters of a mile in the race so far. Um, and here Nielsen, who was sixth at the European Championships this year in the single skull, really doing quite a good job with this. Um, 
the muscular guy, isn't he? Yeah, that was the race won by Demir Martin, the Croatian. Uh, nearly beat the Olympic champion, Mahe Drysdale, at the recent World Cup in Poznan. He's having a little trouble in the swell, though. His blade's going a little deep. Shows you how tricky the conditions are in such a small, fragile shell as this single skull. I mean, he weighs 15 and a half stone, but the boat's only 14 kilos. So it really is... It's, for, it's a very tricky boat to row, and you have to be very skillful at balancing the boat. Do you think Nabs looked around the whole race to see where he is? I don't know, it doesn't look like he just yeah. seems to be slotted into what he wants to do and just going to churn it out, doesn't he? I mean, I wonder as he comes to finish, it's a three quarter of a mile mark, they're past that now, almost coming onto the mile. Four minutes the time to fall, you can see the uh, board that tells the timekeepers what, what they're doing. And uh, Do you think he's noticed it's a long race? He's hoping that Demir is aggressive. I'm, I'm just wondering if Ruben Nab's going to look round and suddenly jump the right up and uh, give Sverre Nielsen the shock of his life. But he looks fairly relaxed there, doesn't he? And look how choppy the water is from the waves, and the boat's twisting and twisting. That's the trouble. Them. If you've got water like that, Adrian, it's so much more difficult to mount a sprint attack at the last part of the race. It is, it is. And you can see how difficult the scholars are finding that when they finish. The hands aren't always level because the boat's touching and yawing. But I think this is a foregone conclusion from here. I'd be surprised if anything catastrophic goes wrong. Nielsen's going to win this. Well, he know he'll be in a race, uh, Nielsen, because he blasted out at the start, got that uh, crucial 3-4 lengths distance on his rival, Ruben Nam from Hollandia Roy Club. And uh, there's probably something like uh, 400 metres to the finish. He's still got a bit of work to do, Sverre Nielsen. Still a minute, minute and a bit to go coming down. The general enclosure looks to be quite empty now. Stewart's also starting to empty out a little bit. People on their way home. Yeah, it is. And I guess uh, Ruben Nab, he'll be aware of how close he is with the puddles. That's the uh, swirls of water made by Sverre Nielsen's blades as he powers through down this course. And Ruben Nab, he's mounting a sprint now, Adrian. You can see the Dutchman has decided to have a go for it. I wonder if uh, Sverre Nielsen will respond. I can't see him getting close. I think he's got enough of a buffer just to let um, Nab do something and then decide whether he needs to respond or not. But you're right, Nab really has suddenly out of nowhere come to, come to life and he's sprinting for the finish. It's amazing what the uh, proximity to the finish does. Sverre Nielsen, and he's kept that cadence up all the way down. Nam is closing. If we could see the boat speed, we'd know that Nam's boat speed is now higher. The man in orange on the left of your picture, he is battling. And I look up, there is about oh, 30 strokes to go from that point. And uh, Nam is closing every stroke on Sverre Nielsen. But it just shows the mentality of these international athletes that despite being down and out, he was always going to attack for the finish. <laughs> Absolutely, and quite often you, you do see them when they're in the uh, World Championship race or World Cup race, the, they're not going to qualify, they stop sculling. We're not here at Henley, he's closed right up, hasn't he? Yeah, Yeah. but Nielsen, I think he's had it under control. He's just, he knows he doesn't need to respond. He's done the work early in the race and made it easy for himself. So it's Vera Nielsen, the uh, top Danish sculler this year, just failed to make Rio, he takes this heat of the Diamond Channel Skulls from the Sweet World Royal from the 2012 Olympics, Ruben Nab in the men's sport. Well done, Sverre Nielsen. Really impressed with the way you started that race.